You guys ever had a project that seemingly took way longer than you expected and it fought you every single step of the way? Well, bathroom vanity and my concrete top are case in point. Why vanity, why? <laughs> It's been so messed up in the fact that it's gonna be two videos. The concrete top is actually gonna be its own separate entity. I'm, I'm not even done that yet. It's still sitting there. I gotta make a new one, a fourth one. And the vanity, however, did turn out eventually. Really good. Just took forever. So check that out. Okie dokie, so we're going to start off by breaking down all of our sheet goods here for our cabinet. Now this is what's going to make up the general body of the cabinet. It's 3 quarter inch birch plywood, it's going to be the sides, the lower shelf, as well as the drawer box itself. <laughs> One thing you'll notice too, the snow is starting to melt here, but it's definitely still on the ground. I started this a couple months ago in early, early spring, and this video is only coming out now, so <laughs> yeah. Now typically when I make these faux frame and panel sides like this, you've probably seen me before, I just take and run pocket holes all the way up the side, but then I have to go back and plug them and fill them with wood filler and sand everything smooth. With this I'm going to take a different approach. I'm only going to use pocket holes on the bottom section where the drawer is going to be, where they're not going to be visible, as well as along the top, again, where they're not going to be visible. And then in the center section where the cabinet's going to be, I'm going to use dowel joinery. I've wanted to use dowel joinery and more things going forward, so I figured now is the best time to start. So I got myself a couple of dowel jigs, different ones, and I figured I'd give them a try here and see what happened, and it actually worked out pretty good. As you can see, I was kind of double checking and triple checking myself just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes because I didn't want to screw this up. Those legs were expensive to begin with, but I didn't. Everything worked out fine. It was all pretty good. The only thing is, is because the dowels don't really have any clamping force. Once I had this screwed together, I did put a clamp on the center section to hold the dowels together until the glue dried. Now while we're waiting for the glue on the dowels to dry, I'm going to go ahead and add my trim to the sides. Now this is 1x3 poplar and I'm referencing the project itself for the size that I need as opposed to using a tape measure. This way I know I've got an exact perfect fit, a little bit snug which is perfect, and then I can just clamp it on. I'm already waiting for clamps and glue to dry anyway, so this is the perfect time to do it. And that exact same thought process is going to carry forward to attaching the two halves together. Now I'm going to use my bottom shelf, which has already been cut to size, to reference all of my stretchers off. of. This way I know that I'm not inducing a warp into the cabinet by having something just a little bit off. I'm also going to attach the lower shelf and all of my stretchers to the cabinet itself with pocket holes because they're going to be hidden anyway. Now my upper rear stretcher is a 1x3 as opposed to a 1x2 because that's going to be my nailer strip to attach the cabinet to the wall. Now I'm not going to have a face frame on the lower shelf either, so I'm going to go ahead and edge band that just so it's nice and finished because the doors and the drawer are going to close against it.
With the body done, we can move on to the drawer and I've shown how to do this lots before and I have a completely dedicated video on my channel. So if you want more info, go check that out. But I should have checked it out because this is where my mistakes started to happen. I forgot to leave enough room for my drawer slides. So my drawer ended up being an inch too big. Luckily, I found it before I put the drawer together. So all I had to do was just cut down my front and back sides to adjust the width and it was all good. And now we get to move on to the doors, which is something I was honestly really excited for because I was finally going to make some true tongue and groove frame and panel shaker doors, unlike the pocket hole ones I'd been making up until this point. Now, I had bought a couple of router bits a couple of years ago and I was ready for all this, thought I was good, cut all my material to size, made myself a little makeshift router table. Well, I ended up throwing the router table in the garbage because it didn't work nearly as well as I was hoping. The router bits that I had bought were crappy and they ended up burning my wood like crazy, which put a lot of stress on the router. Ended up burning my router out, so I had to go buy a new router, a new router table, or a really expensive set of router bits. But once I did, the new router bits fit my plywood just fine. They cut beautifully, the router could take it no problem, there was no strain on anything. And I actually nailed the doors on my very first try, so I was pretty pumped about that. I needed a little bit of a win. Now the only thing I had to do was the depth of the tongue and groove were a little bit different. Thankfully my doors were actually a little too big, so once I cut them down to the correct size for the new router bits, everything went beautifully. Now assembly time is super simple on tongue and groove doors. You just need glue on your tongues, that's it. Just make sure, however, to brush it out and get 100% coverage because anywhere there's no glue, that's a weak spot in the joint. Otherwise, they just kind of slide together and slide your plywood center section in. I did make my plywood panel in the center though, an eighth of an inch smaller in both dimensions. That way as the door expand and contract, that plywood panel in the middle is free floating and it can move around and not get blown out. Otherwise, once they're together, Put them in the clamps with just enough pressure to close the glue joints. You don't want to put a warp into the door and just wipe off any excess. Simple. Now I don't know why, but if you have a painted door, apparently seeing your seams is nay nay. You want it to be perfectly smooth and not actually know you have a tongue and groove door. So I went back and filled all of my seams and my tongue and groove joints with a little bit of drywall spackle before I finished sanded it with 220 grit just to make sure everything was perfectly smooth and then I softened all of my sharp edges by hand, again just breaking them over so the paint doesn't chip off. I also had to quickly add a backer piece to the back side of my drawer front. That way it fits flush against the drawer box and the drawer pole doesn't end up bowing the center panel when it gets installed later. Now one thing I didn't have a problem with was adding my cabinet hardware jig. Uh, True Position Tools reached out and sent me one of their cabinet hardware jig and this thing is next level compared to the way I had been installing cabinet hardware before. But one thing I really liked about it was its repeatability. You could batch out a bunch of doors if you had to. It's got massive stops on it that keep it perfectly squared in the door. And once you have it set up for your cabinet hardware specifically, if you had to do a bunch of doors in one direction, you could. If you have to do opposite opening doors, you literally just flip it and spin it around and because you haven't adjusted the jig, you know you're second door is exactly exactly the same as your first door which is really really good and if you have to do large doors or drawers they've also got this extender bar that you can add on for doing massive cabinet doors and drawers if you need to but I didn't need to in this case just doing it normally was perfectly fine so that's the way I did I just reset and had at her now when you're doing a drawer or a door like this, normally this would be perfectly fine if it's a solid stock door, but one other accessory they have is a shaker door attachment. Because the center panel is set in, there's these little stops that you can get there that are adjustable that keep the jigs perfectly balanced. That way you're not gonna have it wobbling around and potentially throwing off your measurements if you don't have them in place. So it keeps your holes, again, perfectly accurate. So if you guys want any more info, I got some links down below, go check it out. It's really awesome.
Now the last thing to do before finishing is a dry fit of all of the doors and drawers and make sure to make any adjustments you need to right now, whether it's just sanding off a little bit here and there or making an adjustment to a hinge or anything like that. Make sure you got everything fitting perfectly before you go and finish it because <laughs> it's going to be a lot harder to fix later. Now we can move on to finishing and before I add any color to this guy I just want to seal up a tiny little gap I had between my lower shelf and my sides with some caulking. Once that was dry I could go back and add a coat of primer to it and I added just one coat by roller and then sanded the entire thing with 220 grit sandpaper once it was dry to make sure everything was nice and smooth. Then I figured it was clear sailing I could move on to color and no this is where I had another huge setback. You'll notice I've got my mask on I'm surrounded by plastic it's because I started by spraying it but the first can of paint that I had must have been bad there were dried solids everywhere in it you'll notice I keep stopping to pick stuff out of the paint so I ended up stopping it clogged my gun I strained the paint and I just finished rolling it out picking out anything that still was in there after I rolled it out then I sanded everything back again with some 120 grit sandpaper because it was pretty rough then I went and got a new can of paint and then I was able to finish spraying the last couple of coats of paint after that another thing you'll notice nice black drawer slides I figured they would look fantastic with this nope literally off camera the second time I closed these drawer slides it broke so I had to take it off and get a new set of drawer slides before I could add the drawer. Luckily it happened before I put the drawer front on so I could still make sure that the drawer front was perfectly square and level without having to add more holes. But it just seemed like the problems never stopped. Well, there it is. Finally, eventually, standing on its own four feet. I think it turned out fantastic. The top is going to look good once I get the actual one. Don't mind this one. It's just one that I've, one of the failed attempts I'm using for some B-roll footage. But between the top, the faucet, the colors, and the hardware on the vanity, I think it all flows together really well. We're super pumped with how it's coming out. But the concrete top, that's coming up next. The actual build of the correct one. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Oh, it took so long. <laughs>